Good evening, good morning. Uh, my name is Nitin. Um, I'm part of data community, which is Kaggle Data Science Community of Delhi NCR. Uh, uh, welcome to Data Spotlight episode two. Uh, I have a pleasure of meeting one of the most impeccable personalities in the data science community at this point in time. And there is a strong reason why I say impeccable. Uh, I was researching, you know, his profile and I was, I was completely astonished the way, you know, the glide path looks like it's, it's, it's always, you know, it's always a, an aspiration or, or probably an inspiration to take from. So let's hear it uh, from, from the speaker himself. Uh, welcome, Kamal. Uh, welcome, Kamal, on this, on this particular show. Uh, why don't you start with the success story? Yeah, thanks, Nikhil. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks for you know, such a warm welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm re really excited to be part of um, this, um, this event. Um, so uh, I think I would not call it success story. I'll say it's uh, already still a journey going on. Right. Um, so I, I'm so uh, um, I'll start with what I'm doing now, and uh, you know how I started my career. So mm -hmm. currently, you know, currently I'm working with ThoughtWorks um, as uh, head of um, data science and engineering uh, practice in India, right. where I'm primarily responsible to lead and build data science and engineering team, and also um, work as a subject matter expert to our customers. And um, what I really like, enjoy in my current job is to help demystify data for them. Right. So, especially last few years, data has become very overwhelming for people and for the customers, and uh, they're they're really they're really confused where to start and what to do. So I just try to you know solve and simplify this thing. And uh, if I look back, it's it's been almost like 16 years since I started my journey, and uh, I was uh, fortunate. Um, I was fortunate where I got a chance, uh, you know, to start with engineering and science together. Right. So, so in my college time, I used to, you know, enjoy distributed programming. So I, I started as an engineer. So I was okay. always into the program. Okay. And uh, at that time, data scientists and engineering were not the buzzwords or not the terms, but still right. we used to do the kind of work. Right. So I was doing distributed computing. So, you know, the distributed computing is something, you know, how you can... Um, how you can scale the middle of the components, the service layer, so that it can integrate with different uh, systems. And at the same, while doing this, I got an opportunity to build a credit scoring engine uh, for India. I mean, for right. one of the leading credit scoring engine. Mm -hmm. uh, that essentially mean uh, we were sub we were asked or we were supposed to, you know, score a sub an individual's credit score. Okay. Um, and scoring an individual CAD score is a function of multiple things. So Absolutely. it's a function of like high-end engineering skills and also, you know, looking at the CAD worthiness and the transformation transition with the consent of the person. Correct. Because consent was also quite critical. Um, and then build on top, on top of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I look at those days, um, you know, so the I, we used to call it as um, you know, stats or, you know, the you know, statistical modeling or advanced analytics. Right. Uh, where uh, you know, it was it was limited to very you know people who have done specialization in this kind of thing. For example, I remember we we had a couple of team members. So one was one was like um, one 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 was having a major in uh, stats. You know, he was his master's was in stats, and another had a PhD in stats. So or maths. So we used to call them quant scientists or PhDs people, right? right? So and, and 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 even then, we, we nobody expected them to code. Right. Sure. But we used to expect them to, they used to, you know, do the whiteboarding and write the algorithms. And uh, okay. as a developer, I used to code them back okay. in uh, the language of choice. So that made me a good insight to understand what is, what's this all about? Right. Uh, you know, because uh, so that, that, you can't get... that actually intrigued you from, you know, for combining science and math uh, in one go. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for me coming, you know, I was a, and co co de developer at that time, and but I realized that I cannot write what they're ex expecting unless until I go back to my basics of you know quant, you know mass and linear algebra, Correct. and then understand those things and um, write those write that uh, all the algorithms. So, um, so at the time the packages were not that uh, great. Um, right. You know, SaaS used to be one of the leading company, but uh, not everyone wanted to use SaaS, and uh, you know, especially doing at an enterprise level, it was not easy. So. 
uh, so we were we were forced to write our own package or our own model. So mm-hmm. you know, I've written by myself. More, you know, all the simulation, Monte Carlo to Hull White, mm-hmm. uh, to, to different things. And from there, I've seen evolution that has happened. So and okay. I was also I so my career had has grown where I was doing engineering and science together. Okay. So then um, I moved to moved to Japan where I built a risk analytics solution. So risk mm-hmm. analytics is all about um, forecasting on the risk. You know what is the risk right. in a, in terms for insuring a person. So it was again huge data and huge science together. Right. So then again that made me learn more of math and more of science and engineering. And then you know I moved to the, again investment banking where we used to use uh, machine learning and start to price a particular trade. Right. which was a niche and also to build an algorithm that uh, a platform that can do the real time insights and there i moved to an, another company which was all about data and forecasting mm-hmm. and then you know I switched to the consulting side of the world so mm-hmm. because at the, in 2015 the cloud was getting very prominent data science and data engineers were actually uh, becoming the keywords mm-hmm. and even though i was doing something similar i wanted to you know gain the breadth of, um, of the subject and the domain, and that's why I switched to a consulting uh, side of things. Mm-hmm. And within this, um, I've been fortunate to work with some of the leading uh, Fortune 50, Fortune 500 companies in the space of domain, airlines, right. uh, even government, and help them to you know, nav- help them navigate their data science uh, strategies. Okay. So, it, it, uh, let me ask you a follow up question on that, okay? So, I, when I was actually reading the entire profile of yours uh, on LinkedIn, and, and it's an absolute glide path, first of all, okay? Uh, you started as a technology, you know, just an assistant uh, kind of a person, and then you moved as a data, uh, you know, science, uh, head of the data science group at, at all. So what played a major role? Is it is it some type of, you know, experience into the, into the overall field, or do you think that, you know, we have done a course as well of, from a Massachusetts uh, Institute? So does that play a very vital role in the overall journey? Because I still remember, I think you moved to uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, and after that, when you moved to IHS as, as a director of data science. So, uh, how does it all 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 move? What what was the transition all about? Um, so, as I was saying earlier, uh, these terms were not popular, you know, six years back. Back right? then, so, right. So my 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 always, my work has always been a combination of engineering and science together. So. Uh, so my work always, uh, I, mean, I had an opportunity to learn the, you know, the, the, the core of the science. So, I mean, you know, the core, when I say core, the core is the, the, the mass part or the probability part or, or the linear algebra part and okay. how we apply them to solve an inside problem. So I always used to call it as an inside problem. So we are all, the reason we are doing uh, data science is because we wanted to get some insight out of data. Absolutely. And, uh, and so what I focused always um, is to, you know, build an expertise across the entire spectrum mm-hmm. uh, because you you can only build a better insight when you have got the right data in place or right, you have got the right engineering solution in place. Right. If one of them is not true, the second will not fall in. So um, so I, this is how you know I have uh, paced my career. I have shaped up my career and um, you know, I, I, I'll say I was not very far from the, this domain. So my engineering work was always to you know, get the data right and right. also you know do the science on top of it. Right. So it has early it was I mean I have done uh, you know all three or type of things from descriptive to predictive and to prescriptive right and also from deep learning to AI so you know I, I progressed my career as as and when the technology was changing for example uh, somewhere around 2010 it was all about descriptive analytics right. Right? So how how you're doing and how you're using statistical modeling to do stat- descriptive predictive was very few, um, not that much we were you know doing a lot of different techniques to predict. And then, you know, when we moved into the era of, uh, you know, our packages and all those things, and then I, you know, at the time, I also, you know, did my hand study with the SAS and all, so that I get to, you know, explain those things and see how I can apply them into my day-to-day business problem. Right. So being in the product setup, um, you know, gave me an opportunity opportunity to try out new languages and framework and technologies and see if those solutions or new way of working can solve, and can help uh, my business to get better outcomes. So that, that has always been the case. Um, so I, I'll say that rather more, so you know these, choosing the right kind of work and looking at holistically from the business outcome lens uh, has helped me a lot. Yeah. And uh, as as a as a as a, as a I, I'll always say I, I so I, I don't personally differentiate a lot between data engineer data scientists and um, mm-hmm. I, I can we can talk about more as we'll go further into this, this discussion. Correct. Uh, but I'll say this uh, and the biggest uh, biggest challenge that I see is with 
you know those these two people are so i mean these two uh, roles are so connected they they work separately and that's why i have seen most of that that leads to one of that's one of the biggest smell that data science projects fail uh, now coming to your answer of um, you know doing a degree from you know a certificate from mit so i think that two or three things that i um, you know felt there the i mean felt good was you know it gives you a more bigger holistic idea on how the things are right um, and also um, it introduced uh, it introduced me to the larger community you know large you know, there's there's a big um, big community out there and um, you know big alumni out there that definitely has uh, helped me and it also made me um, gave me an opportunity to learn from the practitioners and and the leaders in this space uh for example earlier before that if my uh, you know overall horizon to look at certain thing was like this it just broaden up it further right. so it's all about uh, you know moving further up and uh, you know in this ladder and uh, making it more sharper right. so that that has helped and um, you know it also credentialize uh, you know, for example even though i was doing the same thing uh, um people i mean some you know it it was always uh, you know a, a conversation that used to happen before someone understand that what i have done or what i have not done right so right. but having a degree definitely you know help us to reduce that touch. i mean shorten that conversation you are you who are you who are you but we focus on the outcomes on what, what i can do correct it definitely adds up to your overall credential right a complete yeah. experience yeah. so you know take, taking from your conversation you we always and we we know that you know data science is the new buzzword for the community right so what do you think is the role of a data scientist on a day to day basis you have been you know dealing with them on day uh, you know on daily basis so what do you think uh, is the perfect role of a data scientist uh, on daily basis okay um i think the the role of data scientist has uh, you know have you know, the role has evolved okay and um, and also it it and i i'll see it's evolving and a lot of disruption is happening in this space correct uh, and this is what i'm saying i'm seeing based on what i'm seeing with industry mm -hmm. um so as so if you look back right so earlier data scientist role was just limited or the, i mean the people who are specialists in this field were just limited to come up and uh, write the algorithm that's it right and i'm and even to show and then max they used to do some simulation on you know excel or some matlab and so the technology and give it back but um, you know getting it back to the production was not their job okay or it was not everyone was doing it right right um, there were very few people who were doing it then uh, you know then it moved to a more of an offline analytics kind of business okay. offline kind of analytics business where um, there are a lot of companies that are there you know who That those that, that I mean, where data scientists were supposed to do the business analytics side of things, right? So, right. for example, for example, doing customer analytics, sales analytics, marketing analytics. So, the, their right. entire business model was: give me the data, I'll build model on top of it, mm -hmm. and then I'll give you back the insights, right? Got for it. example, there are so many companies who does the retail analytics, um, you know, pricing, dynamic pricing, all all those things. And what they have helped this uh, community. Uh, to do is to build trust that you know the forecasting can be done and if you look at a lot of retail companies out there and um, you know right. i mean they use they they're heavy customers of kind of analytics right right and then uh, it has evolved further people have started uh, then another disruption happened which was uh, on the cloud and ai mm. right cloud uh, has led to democratization of ai mm. right and a lot of um, so it earlier which was not easily possible correct for general people i mean cloud made it possible you know people the models were out there and uh, it uh, it had uh, it led to a new set of this such a new set of you know uh, you know expectation from ai and that's why a lot of companies started you know thinking about ai seriously they started you know they built their data science teams and, uh, which, and most of them started because uh, you know they, they didn't want to you know have a feeling of being left over so <laughs> they they right. started with it without really thinking on uh, what they expect from data scientists and uh, last couple of years or last three years i have seen a lot of data scientists felt frustrated because um, they came with some expectation but they don't know what they are supposed to do and then you know a new uh, so then at, at the same time uh, because of the cloud and the new innovation that were happening a new set of tools start coming into the market right. uh, for example data data robot or uh, you know azure ml and uh, you know google ml studio mm -hmm. what they did was uh, they made doing data science very very simple correct uh, for example if you have done if you have used a data robot or you know azure ml mm -hmm. i mean 
even person who understand the business or some bit of data science they 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 can leverage uh, those things and can build their models because they're, they're so simple uh, right. so but it has led to is it has led to a new wave of um, uh, technology or data scientists what uh, which people are calling it's calling as um, sitting a data scientist because okay. the reason this term get coined because um, people felt that while data scientists were really really good they lagged uh, it took not lagged it took them a lot of time to understand the domain so the idea i mean the reason these tools are getting popular because the idea was um, you know if there's someone who understand the business right so who understand the right. um, business can they be can they be given more tool right. uh, so that they can use so, so that they can use those uh, tools and uh, leverage data science and build data science and uh, at least do some forecasting mm -hmm. and uh, to create a cadence that they're doing it right so they create, they they still uh, the team all still had um, you know they they're building a very thin layer of um, you know very you know pure play data scientists right. who can come and review the work in those citizen data scientists so imagine right. so you know, for example there is a very large big bag you know if they have um, you know team of 80 or 100 data scientists mm -hmm. there could be 70 citizen data scientists and 20 core data scientists and mm -hmm. this is and this and what this has this is leading to it's leading to a big adoption of data science Right. For example, if you look at Excel, MS Excel, right? Microsoft Excel. Even Excel now has provide is providing um, you know has got a lot of models in build. Similarly, some of the databases like if you look at Google BigQuery, they are providing a native integration with some of the models. So I mean the world, the, what they are trying to do is they are democratizing the AI for data science for people That's so right. that they can use it. Right. And but the, the the goal the goal is how the data science can be made as simple as using a function in an Excel. At right. least to to a certain level, and um, then the next wave that happened was um, is or is, hap is happening is um, uh, the the availability of the new models. Okay. I mean, that, I mean the commercial the sort or AI as a service. Right. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, you know the recognition service of AWS or you know or, or the computer vision solutions or I mean Microsoft recently you know, or, or Google recently launched the Doc Doc service mm -hmm. or uh, you know for example uh, recommendation services, right? Correct. Right. Uh, so. I, I mean, if earlier, like so two years, three years before, if you have to, you know, build a recommendation model, you essentially would require an, an, anything between three to six months of time. Correct. Right, and then when the, the accuracy that you would have got was very less, and you would you you wouldn't feel even comfortable using it. Now, if, I mean, you can directly consume those APIs, and the accuracy that you get, you know, is really really good. Correct. So that's why I'm saying we are going through a different wave um, of right. uh, people, and also the disruption in the market. And that's why the role of data scientists are going to be much more bigger. So earlier, as they were doing the you know the the offline analytics, now they are being considered as someone who can help integrate data science into the larger ecosystem of the company. Right. So data science cannot be cannot stay outside of the core domain. Right. The 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 data scientists have to play a big role in right. building intelligent products. Right. So when I'm saying intelligent products, or, and there and and what I expect, especially the people. I mean, for example, if someone is starting. They can simply, you know, start with using those tools and do a lot of hands-on. Feel, you know, how about it? All it takes Correct. to build a prediction. They, Correct. they, they can, they can forego. Uh, you know, if, for example, if someone is not coming from the core maths and point background, they can for, Correct. forego that. I mean, they can simply use those tools and start building and playing, uh, you know, building Correct. models. And Correct. once they do it, they can get, go into the nitty gritty. It can help them to get fast. Absolutely. Uh, because those things are going to be there. But at the same time, if you are a senior data scientist, right? Uh, your job becomes uh, your job become much more responsible. Right. The company expect you to you know just don't do the model, but think about how you're going to integrate your models into the core product, right. and so that you know so that the the, the insight or the predictions are live, and right. you have a you have a the, you have a solution or framework in place so right. that your models are also continuously learning. Right. Uh, you true. cannot think separately and say you know what it's not my job. Correct. It's 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 now you have and that's why data port thinking you know AI ports are are becoming very very popular. That's become a collaboration now between you know junior data scientists, data scientists, and the senior data scientists. If I may call it that. So that you you yeah. actually bring a lot of insight into the real world because as of now in the community itself, it's more of you know uh, you know it, it's just a data science role. All you do is you play with data, you play with a lot of ML models, but then. There is a difference in the reality, right? Also, you bring a a, a very good important uh, point in the overall conversation. You said that you know a lot of data scientists get frustrated because of things like you know 
uh, there is a difference between talking about the model, hiring a person, data, a person which is a data science, and you don't know what to do with them. So, uh, hiring a data scientist, understanding the role of, of that particular data scientist, and when on the ground, you don't know what to do with them. Because there is a very thin chances of implementation of actual AI or ML models. So, do you think uh, that, that this challenge is still persist in the industry at this time? Um, I think the industry is maturing. Uh, you know, it has matured much more than that. Because uh, if you look at um, the wave, uh, you know, that took before that was there, mm -hmm. and it had definitely you know mellowed down. Right. And everyone wanted to hire data scientists. Right. But also at the same time. 80% of the customers struggled what to do with data scientists. Absolutely. Right. Uh, but to data scientists, or they didn't have the ecosystem to create data for data scientists. And even data scientists, uh, I mean, I, I have seen so many uh, conversations between data science uh, product teams and engineering teams where data science were saying, I can do everything, but you don't have the data. And data engineering was saying, you know, I can bring, bring the data, but you tell me what you need. And product team was saying, uh, you know, we, we don't know how to build intelligence. So there was, there was, there was a big, big disconnect. Right. And uh, so, and, and that's why, you know, as a, as a practitioner in this space, um, what, uh, you know, I'm really advocating is uh, how you can, uh, how you can bring in the best of the software engineering world into this space, right. uh, which is uh, think of data. Products. Uh, so when you bring in the product thinking, so you don't uh, organize your team with, res with respect to specialization, but you organize your team based on the product features, right? right? And if you're building product, think of uh, the product features, think of make, make your insight can be a feature of your product. That is right? Right. And then when you have your insight as a feature, then, then create your course, you know, where you can have a UX person or you can have a data scientist or you can have an engineer. Right. And and so where you that this organization the ports help to change the course of the conversation then you know then conversation will only will, will, will i mean the conversation changes uh, to you know what we need to build this feature then right. people are clear and people can uh, do the right thing data scientists know what kind of model he or she needs to build similarly engineer will know what kind of uh, data or pipeline uh, he, they need to build and um, similarly ux person will know how this insights are going to be consumed right or, right. or person will get to know that uh, reorganization of mindsets are happening mm -hmm. or teams are happening but it's not happening at that large scale so, um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a member of this community, uh, my recommendation would always be before jumping on to, uh, you know, any data science pro, uh, project, uh, what you should always uh, ask is, uh, what is the outcome? Uh, what is the outcome uh, that's required? And right. uh, and if once you understand the outcome, the second thing that you should um, you should be asking is, uh, you know, what are the options available? And then qualify your problem really Clearly, clearly, if it's a, if it qualifies as a data science problem or an AI problem, right. or can it be done by using simple tools? And if it qualifies as a data science problem, then understand, uh, you know, what kind of uh, business impact it will have versus the effort. I mean, you have to do an ROI analysis, and right. then and then once you have a clear, then you it will help you to uh, present a very strong case to your stakeholder that you know it makes sense, and then everyone right. will be aligned. Right. So then, just then, so let's just change the work way of working. Don't restrict yourself by just doing modeling but right. uh, also you know build a build a product always wear a product hat That's right. and that will help you to be more impactful and uh, you know will bring more success to your area or work wherever you are right. well so far we have talked about a lot of hunky dory things uh, i wanted to check with you 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 might face a lot of challenge on daily basis can you share any use case challenge which you have worked upon recently and you know uh, just come out, uh, you know, as a successful story. Uh, any use case challenge which you which you can share with the with the community? Uh, I, I think so. As I said, the, so that challenges can be from multiple aspects. One uh, challenge could be, you know, how to think about a model, right? Right. And uh, so, but the, the challenge at every stage. So as I was saying earlier, the first challenge was that I've always that almost in every project that I face or my team faces is uh, you know showing the value right. uh, showing sh showing the value of an initiative the second uh, challenge is that um, the team faces to make sure that data is there so and and the third and the biggest challenge was how you um, how you show progress mm -hmm. how you're showing progress uh, you know you know to your stakeholders 
um, and also even if you do this, uh, how the model can be deployed faster without right. and lesser our result. So um, then, uh, when I'm talking, so I can I can uh, you know think of many uh, many, many examples. Uh, mm -hmm. But let me just try to you know share, share a couple of here. So at this sure. the challenge that my uh, that my team has faced. So uh, for example, uh, so uh, one uh, one of our team was building uh, you know dynamic pricing uh, mm -hmm. you know model, okay. dynamic pricing for uh, retail uh, retail joint. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the so when we talk about dynamic dynamic pricing, it's all about uh, you know the, the ask was pretty high level. So can we okay. can we price the products dynamically? Okay. And uh, the challenge starts from there. All right. So first of all, the challenge was uh, which approach to use, and the the price has a direct impact on customer P and L, right? And uh, which model can be used, and uh, you know how, how uh, and you know how we can reduce those things. So our team, you know, so the so the, the first thing was that the challenge was, I mean, for example, the customer had had more than uh, two hundred thousand of SKUs. Or, right, and uh, to it was uh, not practically possible for you know for every uh, product to get price. I mean, because of so many things, elastic, elasticity, and you know, seasonality, and that's so many right. factor that goes in. So the first was how we can you know identify the set of products uh, that you know that can actually create an impact if we price them dynamically. Correct. Right. Um, the it took uh, then the second uh, thing was. Once we have identified what to opt, what we should, you know, thinking of optimization matrix, right. uh, you know, because uh, what the team should optimize on, uh, whether they should optimize on the top line or whether they should optimize on the bottom line, or you know, or whether they should. Uh, once this was done, and then opt, I mean, then the third was the matrix. So the matrix was very very key thing, right? So yeah. whether we should forecast the demand, and then optimize right. our price on this, whether we directly right. do this. So there were there were some challenges and the time pressure was there. So what we learned over there was um, it's it it uh, works well when we are working very closely with the stakeholder, right. uh, you know. So uh, as we show the life cycle of a data data science, Correct. that life cycle is very very important, right? Uh, the biggest thing is um, you have to keep your stakeholders, you know, uh, always informed. Uh, you know, some way of you know agile way of working definitely helps. And right. uh, keep uh, think of it as a mind map and think of you know mind map with a lot of if else uh, kind of flow chart with the FL, FL condition. Correct. Where every every milestone has a transition point. Correct. You know, it ha it has a transition point. For example, if you you know once you start, if in case of uh, dynamic pricing, once you start, the first thing was to identify the set of products. Absolutely. You know that can be planned. Once you identify that set of products, then it's a it's it's a decision point. Correct. Right. True. Whether whether you can, because your pro, your customer has to agree or your your stakeholder has to agree whether it they say they see a sense or not. Right. Right. Then, True. then the second milestone was um, then you. I mean, you have to you have to really think through on. Um, okay, if I'm doing the top line, then uh, whether I should optimize on uh, demand or whether I should optimize on something else. True. Then this is another decision point. True. So I mean, this is and then once you define this thing, the second thing that will uh, I think most of the time the team forget. So they get too, uh, too bogged down into into your into their own world into their own complexity. Uh, they uh, we forgot to in we I mean we they, they forgot to include the engineering teams, and because there's a huge dependence on engineering team yeah, to yeah. get the data. Correct, correct. And uh, but but it but uh, you know it led to it led to you know for example if that there was X month number of months to deliver yeah, yeah. the project they almost spent fifty percent of the time to yeah. build their models and to get to the model. Correct. And uh, while they were clear, they they felt that you know how I'm how we're going to get the data. Correct. So. So I mean, so the learning was uh, don't leave your engine team till last. Right. Uh, make them make them be a part of uh, you know planning from day one, so right. that uh, you know they, they they build in their they, they bring in they have a plan to get the data for you whenever you require. Correct. And uh, also uh, also the, there was a lot of time that went into understanding the nitty gritties of data. So how you can right. do it back, how you can process uh, you know get your information with your BS, involve your BS as well from day one. Right. That helps. And even though everything was, let's assume it was done, the biggest challenge um, the, 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 the team, uh, or I've seen the team facing were, you yeah. know, how to field test, how to do a field test, how to do the field testing of uh, that model. Correct. Uh, right. So, uh, because uh, it's, it's easy, you can get prediction, whatever you get in the, your test environment. Right. But, uh, you know, before going live, uh, you, need, you need to have a strategy in place, how you're going to allow your model. 
Correct. You know, for example, let's you know, in in in, in get, again taking from the same example, if let's say you have to price for fifty thousand products, right. and that through you know certain regions, you won't go in one go. You won't go out in one go. You have to iteratively roll it out. Right. And uh, and the and the if um, let's say if for, even for sixty thousand products, if you have, if you have to test it, it will take time. It will take lots and lots of time, and sometimes more than right. um, more than than what you have done. And lot of time team forget to estimate for that time. Right. And uh, what we have learned again is getting an engineering team again as you know pair with you or as a partner helps right. you to shorten those cycles so that you can right. do automation, you can automate your field testing thing, you can automate your deployment scripts, auto, auto deployment um, you know scripts so that you know the entire cycle can re get reduced. Uh, so for example, the fault first uh, field test took let's if it took uh, three months or two months. Mm -hmm. With the automation, the same thing could uh, work, can can be reduced to uh, or or got reduced to less than a week. Okay. Right. So that that's a big big huge impact. And the, the rollout, that initial rollout that took six months was um, you know was got reduced to less than a couple of weeks time. So I'm saying uh, as a data scientist, if you are there, if you're working, just don't think on the model. Broaden your horizon. Think on you know what will happen after it goes live. How you plan to go live. And even before the model, what kind of dependencies do you have? That will help you. It's a complete planning process which takes place and you have to <laughs> abide by it. Yeah. So yeah, because, it, because, because model building is just a very small piece of the entire puzzle. Absolutely. absolutely. It's, 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 the, it's, it's the much more larger thing that goes into play and you have to, you, and you have to account for it. And if you're building your model for real-time applications, real-time application, or let's say if you are doing the deep learning models, right? So, uh, then, uh, then it becomes much more complex because you also have to factor in the training cost. Uh, you know, because the training cost for the deep learning model goes very, very high, right? right? And um, then uh, you also have to—I mean, so you have to factor in multiple other things. So just think holistically. You know, how you are going to productionize your model and uh, where it's right. going to be get consumed. Got it. Okay. Kamal, uh, do you want to give any any advice to a person who is actually joining a data science field, probably? He or she is not from the background one so we can give an advice to a person who is a non-technical from a non-technical background and a person who is actually from a technical background but he he or she specifically wants to move to data science field. so what advice would you want to give um, yeah I, I think the first advice that I generally give right so because I am also I, I'm also responsible for capability of people and building new people in my organization okay uh, I, I think you very you, you called out it very clearly. So it depends on from where the person is coming. Right. Um, one thing that says common is uh, one person has to enjoy data. Uh, person True. has to enjoy data, right? So they should True. not um, get bogged down by looking at uh, hundred different columns with right. a lot of different values into this. So they should okay. be. I mean, the big simplest thing is if I just give you a set of ten or tables with the, you know, some a lot of columns. Right. Uh, can you just build some graphs out of it? Simple graphs out of it. Do you enjoy Correct. thinking what Correct. this data is talking about? Forget about anything else, right? Can you spend hours and hours with that data? Right. That's and can you relate this thing? And if you because I think it looks very rosy and shiny, and of late uh, I've seen whenever people goes into this, they say oh, we are not comfortable with data. You know, can someone <laughs> do this? And uh, so I mean, it's like. No, dude, you have to do this. So okay. um, you, so first of all, feel, I mean, see if you're comfortable with the data, right? That's the first step. Okay. The second, uh, and to do this, play around with different things. Use a lot of uh, self-service tools. BI tools are there, for example, Tableau, Click, Power BI. So, I mean, I mean there's, so, there's so many good tools that help you to, you know, just play, help you to give you right. first handle on the data. Right. And then if, you, if you're comfortable with data, the second thing uh, that you should uh, do, right? So even if you're not coming from, uh, you know, Technical background right. um, is you know do some hands-on right so build some build some simple problems. Right. Um, Kaggle is a great uh, source of all those information, all those problems. Um, use uh, some of the tools that help you to simplify those uh, to solve those problems. Right. Uh, you know, for example, you know use as I was saying earlier, use like something like from Azure ML, Google ML. Studio, or AI studio. I mean, right. so those those two have to do, do things simple and you know just focus on this, using the models. Work as a consumer of the models. Don't go into the model engineering now. Once you get some prediction, then right. challenge yourself um, to understand how it can be done better. 
Absolutely. Uh, can I look at some more features? Can I do something better? And then pick up, I mean, just to you know understand those things, you can always pick a model, pick an algorithm and go deep into this. Right. Uh, you know, you can understand about, uh, you know, and then once you do this, think of, you know, how, what are the different uh, solutions available or what are the different approaches available on, you know, on that you can use to, you know, look at your metrics or your, uh, or your, or your, you know, optim optimization techniques and all those things. Correct. That can, that can be a progressive path. Uh, I mean, for the people who are not from the uh, programming world, they can use those tools. Right. Uh, but let's say if you really are serious and uh, if you are starting fresh and if you are, you know, from the technology world, um, I think uh, three things goes without without saying. You need to be really good in stats. Um, you need to you need, you need to be good in um, you know linear algebra, and uh, probabilities. You know three things. I mean those things. I mean for example, if we are hiring a data scientist, uh, we I mean those three. The understanding of those. I mean this fundamental maths um, is is a must. Right. Is a must. We really look. You know whether how much you understand and how much you understand about the applicability of these things. Right. Once, once, uh, once someone understand it, then, uh, you know, uh, then it all lives, oh, then it's all about, uh, you know, using these techniques and then, you know, applying those techniques to different uh, models or, you know, you know things. Correct. So depending from where you are starting, if you are, if you are already into business, start simpler, do right. your hands dirty. Or right. even if, even if you're starting new, I don't spend a year, uh, you know, just learning algorithms and maths and all those things, you will get bored and you will you will just get out. So, example, uh, I can give you my personal example. Um, that's true when I was in my college. So, at that time in college, I don't know if it's the same case. Uh, they used to teach Java and, and Notepad. Okay. Right. So, uh, I found it so boring and so difficult that uh, I left Java for some time okay. because I said, why should I do this? I have to learn everything. I have to remember correct, everything. Correct. Then I initially, then at the time, visual basing used to be there, and I found it too intuitive and too good, and uh, you know, started programming from the, from that ID. Then, when I was in, in the corporate world, or sometime later in my in my college, um, I realized that there are IDs for Java that exist. That correct. made me. I mean, that changed my perspective altogether, and that made me do more and more program. Got it. Same is the case for you. If you are starting new, start good, take some good ideas, do more hands on. You, it. it will bring your interest, and then you Absolutely. can. You know, that, that, that world is never ending. It's a very vast field. You can keep reading and keep studying, but solve more problems. Got it. Okay. So just the last thing uh, before we. We'll, so so ahead, one sorry. thing that I like to ask is, uh, you I mean, the people can also think about from where they like to start. So again, there's a deep, deep learning side of things and right. also the simple you know, classic ML kind of things. Correct. So if you are starting with deep learning, just pick pick one specialization. Don't go far, you know, don't go in the, those areas. Either, Correct. you know, start from deep learning, start from classic ML. Okay. If you're, so, and then build your specialization. But if you're starting, if you're really serious as a data scientist, right. starting new, start with classic ML, build expertise on the, uh, the traditional models, algorithm, and then move to deep learning. It will make correct. your foundation strong. Absolutely. So just the last thing uh, before we part, uh, any, any words for the community do you think uh, we should be following or uh, any word for the community members with those last words from your side? Um, I think this is this is. I mean, we are living in the best of the AI times. That's uh, right. This, uh, I mean, I have, so there's a lot of acceptance uh, that's you know that that has come over a period of time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I feel that there's a lot of opportunity for everyone out there. Correct. Uh, just uh, pick, pick pick an area that's that you really enjoy. Uh, you know, it can be NLP, it can be computer vision, or it can be classic ML, sure. yeah, whatever you enjoy. Sure. Start on this, build your expertise, mm -hmm. and go from there. Um, and also, when you're writing uh, AI, don't uh, forget about ethics, uh, because um, these are Important. some common principles. There are some common principles that that will um, that will decide the the next fate of AI, and right. also you know for human as well. So think always keep the human and AI balance in between, and think of Valid writing point, ethics sir. for one another. And uh, it's, it's it's I think it's an exciting thing. And even after COVID. Uh, everyone would, you know, I see there's a surge in using AI and data science everywhere. So um, I, I think that it can't be better time than now. Absolutely. So I, com I completely uh, echo, completely echo. All right, Kamal, uh, that's about it for today. Uh, I think you, you 
you explain things so amazingly for for the community members i'm sure they they learn a lot of things from you and they'll reach out to you in case of in case you know they really want to get motivation uh, you know uh, from you so that's about it any questions for me sir or we can part for the day I think uh, we can park for uh, today. So it's really nice talking to you, and um, thanks Same again man. for setting up this session. Um, I I I feel honored, and I feel excited to you know if uh, some of my experience can help our fellow member fellow community members, and uh, looking forward to share more experience of mine. Sure, sir. I mean, th it's an honor for all of us to uh, interview to interact with you. It was really great uh, talking to you, sir. Thank you so much.